Nicole Neely is the president and founder of Parents Defending Education. She has two kids in public school, and I'm sure that's been quite complicated for the past couple years. Nicole, thank you so much for coming on. It's good to see you on this Friday night. Thank you for having me. Yeah, sure. The, the, the Secretary of Education, a White House cabinet post, going to this length to vilify parents who object to this ridiculous left-wing ide ideology that's sweeping through our school system. I mean, it, how flabbergasted were you when, you when you read this story that somebody with such a big, with such status and such a big position is, is, is weaseling around telling them to write me a letter so that we can call them terrorists? I mean, I, it just blew me away. I mean, I knew that the federal government was rotten. I didn't know it was this rotten, and I didn't know it went this far up, honestly. Um, yeah. We had been on this from the beginning, from when the National School Board Association sent their letter to the Department of Justice. We watched DOJ then turn that around within five days, which obviously is warp speed for the federal government. So it very much felt like the cake was baked. And now, after filing all these Freedom of Information Act requests against the school board members that are on the National School Board Association board to figure out if they knew about this or if they were complicit in this, I found out this week that, yes, as you said, um, one board member said that Chip Slave, and at the time the interim executive director of NSBA, um, did so at the behest of Cardona. And so American parents, American citizens deserve to know who did this, who was involved, why did they do it, what communications were had, and who will be held accountable. How dare you do this to us? How dare you weaponize our government against us? We have a constitutional right to petition the government for a redress of grievances. The end. Yeah. You know, what I see is, you know, there, there's always, you, you look at government throughout history in, in much worse places than the United States, and you just, you always see these general themes. And I, and I feel like you can see, I mean, you can always see this desire. When you give people power, the first thing they want to do is suppress any opposition to their power, because they sure as hell don't want to let go of that power. I mean, once they have it, they can never lose it. And in this country, Political parties lose power every four or eight years, just about, sometimes every two or four years, but they really don't want to. And you start to see how this party is trying to figure out a way to still be able to say, oh, it's a free country, it's this and that, it's all these great things. But at the same time, let's see if we can vilify our political opposition to the point where you just can't, they can't be allowed. This is kind of the way Trump's no longer allowed, right? I mean, they're basically saying Trump can't be president anymore, you know, and, and they're just starting to get to the point where it's like Republicans can no longer be in power because it's too dangerous. Look at what they're doing. They're terrorists. It's crazy, isn't it? Right. And I mean, looking at this overreach, I mean, the backlash that this has incited across the country is astonishing. American parents have been angry for two years for a very, very good reason. Schools were shut down with no end in sight. Our children were treated badly. Learning loss is abysmal, which has actually impacted, dispro disproportionately impacted, disadvantaged students. Right. And then when they go back, instead of being, you know, catching up on reading, writing, and arithmetic, they have social justice lessons forced on their throat. Yeah. They're, you know, we're eliminating advanced math classes in the name of equity. So parents are mad, and that opposition, that unrest, that unhappiness is unacceptable, as you said, to the people in power. And so they want to scare us, they want to chill us, but sadly, you know, they have awoken these mama bears and papa bears who are not going away. We will not back down. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I love organizations like yours, what you guys do. This growing movement of parents uh, like yours fighting against CRT, fighting against a lot of what's happening, is, uh, is sweeping through state legislatures. Today in Virginia, lawmakers introduced a bill to ban critical race theory indoctrination and provide parents with transparency in their kids' curriculum, which is what every parent now really wants. After a lot of years where parents maybe didn't have to pay attention, now they know they need to pay attention. If a school knowingly violates that law, this is what's really interesting. Families can take their education elsewhere. And I think that that is, that is huge because that brings you know, accountability to it. There was never any consequence, right? The school could be as crappy as it wanted to be and it still got funded and it still was the only option because if you pay taxes, you're going to send, I mean, unless you're rich, you're going to pay, you're going to send your kids to that school because there was no competition for it, which is exactly why government run schooling is so bad, why it's so terrible in some of our biggest cities. But to see that accountability in the Virginia law, I love. If they don't do it the way they're supposed to do it, you can take your tax dollars for education, put it right back in your pocket, go find a private school and do it right. Absolutely. We're so excited because this instills such a level of accountability in the system. The, the overreach that these teachers have been doing, trying to get away with murder behind closed doors, those days are over. Yeah. So as you said, it's a combination of transparency, knowing what is going on in the classroom, and then allowing people that escape hatch to go and find a better alternative that fits their values. If somebody wants to send their kid to private school to Social Justice Country Day, 
you know, go ahead, that's your choice. <laughs> but don't do it to my child against my will with my tax dollars. Nope. Amen, Nicole. Amen. Thank you so much. Nicole Neely, president and founder of Parents Defending Education. Thank you for taking the time. Good to see you. Thanks, Kevin.